when UN aircraft first encountered MiG-15s in the skies of North Korea in November of 1950, it was believed that they were flown by Chinese pilots. It was only in spring of 1951 that radio communication in Russian language was intercepted and the true identity of MiG pilots became obvious. The Chinese People's Liberation Army Air Force was a very young and inexperienced service at the time, not capable of engaging experienced American air power on that level. The service was formally established in November of 1949, while the first organized air unit of the Army began to operate in July of the same year, using Mustangs captured from the Chinese Nationalist Forces. Further development of the Air Force would be achieved with the help of the Soviet Union, which first agreed to supply propeller-driven types such as Lavochkin La-9 and La-11 fighters or Tupolev-2 bombers and provide pilot training. The first Chinese unit, including jet fighters, was the 4th Mixed Aviation Brigade, which was to operate 38 MiG-15s, and it was established in June 1950. But the unit, and in fact the entire Air Force, was far from being operational when China decided to intervene in the Korean War. Soviet Union would provide the fighters to confront the UN aircraft and train Chinese pilots at the same time. In November 1950, Chinese Air Force had two fighter divisions, one bomber regiment and one attack regiment with about 200 combat aircraft total. Most MiG pilots had just begun flying solo, and none of them, including their commanders, had any air combat experience. The solution was to first send small units to fly over North Korea under Soviet protection. On December 4th, the 28th Flying Group of the 10th Aviation Regiment from the 4th Aviation Division was ordered to transfer to Dandong, near North Korean border. This Chinese unit was to send no more than four plane flights across the border at a time, coordinate closely with the Soviet unit sharing the airbase, and fly combat missions only when enemy units were weak. Ten Chinese pilots were deployed, and they flew their first mission on 28 December 1950. They were accompanied by two Soviet flights. Inexperienced Chinese pilots failed to keep up with their Soviet allies, which at one point suddenly broke and dove in search of enemy fighters. Similar situations repeated in the following days. Early 1951 saw a reduction of American air activity, and two more Chinese flying groups joined the first one at Dandong on 17 January. Chinese pilots encountered the enemy for the first time on January 21st. Six Chinese and eight Soviet MiG-15s encountered four F-84s dive-bombing the Chongchon River Bridge. Sources don't agree exactly on what happened next. Group leader Li Han claimed either damaging one Thunder jet or shooting it down. American sources definitely confirmed one F-84E flown by Lt. Grant Simpson shot down by MiGs in this engagement. Another one flown by Lt. Don Watt was damaged. Some sources attribute the victory to the Soviet pilot Major Mihailov. There was also a claim of one MiG-15 shot down by Lt. Col. William Bertram. That is the first MiG kill attributed to F-84 in Korea, although there is no record of a MiG loss on the Chinese or the Soviet side. One week later, Lee Han was credited with shooting down another F-84 off the North Korean coast. American records, however, don't show any aircraft of this type lost on that date. Chinese leadership decided to replace the pilots of 10th Aviation Regiment with those of 12th Aviation Regiment at Dandong on 2nd of February hoping to get more experience for Chinese pilots. The pilots of the new unit had only about 15 hours in MiG-15s. Two of them collided on takeoff. One airplane crashed while the pilot attempted to land after his fuel ran out. The 12th Aviation Regiment was pulled back in early March. Chinese pilots clearly needed more training, and for the next six months, all the responsibility for air operations was on Soviet pilots.
By June 1951, China had six fighter divisions, two of them equipped fully with MiG-15s and one with a single MiG-15 regiment. In September, one of the divisions, the 4th, was ordered to deploy to Langtou airfield with its 55 MiG-15s. Although still under Soviet control, the Chinese pilots would now fly independent missions. Because of their inexperience, the Soviets would assign them to attacking fighter-bomber formations. On September 25th, 16 MiG-15s were launched along with some Soviet fighters to intercept a group of 30 F-80 shooting stars escorted by 20 Sabres. Chinese MiGs were led by Li Wenmo, and it was their third mission of the day, but they met no enemy on the first two missions. The flight flew south at 6,000 meters of altitude. Over Anju, the leader of the rear element, Li Yongtai, spotted eight F-80s underneath them. Li ordered his pilots to drop their tanks and let his flight in a sharp, descending turn on the shooting stars. But their curve was too wide and they were unable to attack American aircraft which scattered. Lee then spotted four F-86s behind him. He felt his plane shudder from machine gun hits. Lee began to climb and although he was hit one more time, he was able to escape the sabers and eventually land with more than 30 holes in the fuselage. At the same time, the third pair of MiGs was engaged in a dogfight with six Sabres. The wingman was separated from the leader and he was able to open fire on one of the enemy fighters. But he was eventually hit by another Sabre. The Chinese pilot tried to eject, but his altitude was too low and he was killed. He was credited with shooting down a saber, but American records only show one damaged saber and no losses. The nature of Chinese kill confirmation is unclear. People's Liberation Army Air Force sent a telegram commending Lee and his pilots as, quote, inexperienced pilots who bravely engaged with more than 100 enemy planes and won the battle, unquote. On September 26th and 27th, the pilots of the 4th Division fought two large battles with enemy aircraft. Details are unknown, but several MiGs were lost. On 5th of October 1951, no less than 42 MiGs were launched to provide cover for ground troops crossing the Chongchong River. The pilots of the 10th Regiment caught a group of F-80s which were climbing away after a bombing run southeast of Sinanju. They claimed three F-80s destroyed for a loss of one MiG. The Korean War Air Loss Database doesn't show any UN aircraft lost to MiGs on that date. On 10th of October, a Chinese pilot was credited with two victories. Hua Longyi and his second flying group took off at 3.30 p.m. to help other MiGs fighting over Anju. As they were heading south, Hua Longyi spotted four F-84s below flying towards the Yellow Sea. He attacked one Thunderjet whose pilot responded by a banking dive. Hu 
Wah caught up and fired again. Hua's wingman reported seeing the American jet smoking on the way down. Hua then attacked the Thunderjet wingman, chasing him down to 900 meters of altitude. He opened fire, which again resulted in the enemy aircraft smoking and plunging towards the ground. Hua Longyi was credited with a third kill later that week, but he was wounded in the arm and he never again returned to combat. As for his claims on 10 October, once again the Korean War Air Loss database shows no such losses on that date. Between 12 September and 19 October, the 4th Division flew 508 sorties, engaging the enemy 10 times and claimed 20 kills and 10 enemy planes damaged. They lost 14 airplanes in return. As already mentioned, most of these claims are questionable as they can't be matched with the records of UN forces. The 4th Division was replaced after 20 October by the 3rd Division. People's Liberation Army Air Force continued with expansion and over time it was gradually taking over responsibility for fighting from the Soviets in later phase of the war. If you liked the video, be sure to press the like button. Become a Patreon supporter or donate on PayPal to ensure future content and keep watching Showtime 112.